A couple months ago, a new Disney teaser was released promoting their new film, Wish, that is set to come out in November of 2023, about a month after Disney officially turns 100, celebrating a century of animation progress that has influenced the world today. And as a result, they want to have this new film pay tribute with the tagline being a century in the making, with an art style that blends both present and past. And when I originally saw the first trailer, I was nothing short of confused and disappointed, especially in my video titled Why Wish Worried Me, one that compared to to what has came out before and a little after at that point where it felt like a step backwards rather than a step forward to blend old with the new. And of course, in recent days, the newer trailer for Wish was released, showcasing more of the movie and more cautious optimism for its story. And it's something I just needed to talk about as a whole with my points about Disney animation that has built this channel and a problem that clearly plagues them in recent years, one I will eventually discuss alongside other major issues the company face on its own birthday, but just for now focusing on the animation aspect that has been seriously hurt after after 2020. And this is a movie that is clearly reflecting on people's worried and confused attitudes about what to expect out of this company and its very studio that created it. One done in a year that showcased how bad things have truly turned out that brought us back once again to the darker times the company had been facing before. And it's a problem that I brought up in my last video when the teaser came out, being the animation itself because throughout the course of this year in trying to come up with ideas to talk about and surrounding the general public reaction to such films was how films from Disney and Pixar weren't catching people's attention as usual as we know before. The studios that actually made animation to what it is today. In the case of Elemento, before we knew of the film itself, it was its generic story that wasn't very shown well enough, where in the case of Wish, it was more for its animation alone. Because Wish showed promise that returned to some of the classical elements of Disney animation with a proper villain from the start this time and your typical like Disney princess and side character story who happens to also be voiced by Alan Tudyk, where ever since he did King Candy, Disney somehow just kept using him in each of their films. Just a more traditional form to the original stories that Disney usually produced from. I mean, that isn't to say they haven't from before where the last film was in fact Strange World, but that also flopped and people actually don't have memories of that at all. But as we learned throughout the year with the release of Elemental, is where the film actually proved us wrong, where I actually enjoyed it, being more than what was shown for such a great story that relates to so many of us focusing more on the family aspect rather than the run-of-the-mill Romeo and Juliet story we came to think about it. It just felt like a film that Pixar would have made and was just ruined by its overall reception that Disney had cultivated for the studio itself amidst the pandemic. The point being here is where we all just misjudge the situation of the film's perception that has to do more with Disney's own poor strategy they do that they commit to doing as a company, affecting all levels of their business and perception that is destroying the image from before. And because of that, I tried to achieve a different look at the film with what it entails regarding the studio as a whole with what has happened overall, considering that Walt Disney Animation is clearly different from Pixar Animation with what both actually tries to achieve. Because earlier, I did also point out that some of the recent films from both studios seem to blend into each other with their constant push for 3D and constantly pushing out of 2D instead as a relic of the past where this film tries to thinly veil itself as returning to some form as we see in the background. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think that's pretty unique on its own and this trailer has clearly improved in some areas and actually shown some great detail from where it was first shown, but judging by the reaction to the trailer with the like to dislike ratio being very close, there still lies a major problem concerning Disney and that is felt by everyone. Where that problem itself is the refusal to commit, whether it be 2D or 3D or original stories as we know as a whole that they aren't willing to do something that goes beyond or diverse in its animation. If we take a look at our main characters, their models in some respects still follows that of the recent trends that kind of began in some form with Tango trying to be blended in with these unique backgrounds that fit more within the traditional style of animation as I have pointed out before. The uniqueness of the world setting that Disney films have had, inspired by other things like comics or whatnot, like in the case of stories like what Atlantis was actually doing. Something I think in some respects Strange World could have benefited from considering that was inspired by these pulp comics but then switch back to our typical style of Disney animation we have come to know. And like I said before, the style they have isn't bad, as they offer some uniqueness to it expressed in films like Moana and Kanto, which I'm a big fan of, where it really showcases the beauty of Disney's 3D revival style, but sometimes it gets dragged into disappointing results faster than trailers like Wish. And when they try to blend it with something like this, as I mentioned before, it looks something more akin to a Disney Junior show. Which of course, is not the quality Disney should be producing on the big screen. It lacks innovation from what we have seen 
before in Pixar with Elemental and the fire effects and of course the ones from Spider-Verse which styles influence other studios like DreamWorks and so forth. But it's not to say I don't want these types of style for my films as it does offer something different and really keeps Pixar's image in check to stay unique and not uninspired in the process under Disney, but sometimes it feels like they put this film in the midpoint of unrefined mess that takes any enjoyment out of it. But alas, when it does come to the story part, no matter how good or bad it is, the animation still doesn't matter at all and can actually benefit it if it pulls it off well with what I'm hoping for with Wish and the return of such classic elements that this film portrays. But then again, people are being set up with this expectation to the film considering it is the story labeled as a century in the making with the Disney 100 logo appearing across this year. And when you do that, why wouldn't you actually expect something a bit more from the grand old company that was known for pushing technology before anyone else actually could producing things no one had ever seen before at its time? It's these factors that contribute to the feeling of the movie whether it can impress or depress, especially when the movie is called Wish, where wishes are an integral part of what Disney is known for, where you would want it to actually shine as bright as the largest star in its overall feeling. But you aren't just getting that feeling with Wish at this point at all. You feel conflicted, half bad and half good, where it feels like it returns to form in some aspects but also not impressing enough with what has already been happening in the animation department, falling into the same generic mediocrity we've already been accustomed to to characters, story, and of course, what has already happened. And although we've learned not to judge films as much from a trailer alone anymore rather than the content of the movie, it still doesn't guarantee one would actually improve upon the other. Still two different studios as two different stories that come with different outcomes. Where you just have that innate feeling that this feels overall bland and generic as hell on face value. Which is what the most people have come to expect out of this company and every film division they offer. I know I contribute to complaining a lot about these decisions, but that is because I absolutely love Disney and want them to reach as many people as possible to find these factors out, to really actually showcase the beauty of what they can do with the passion for the art that they have always stood for. But I can't always give them the benefit of the doubt anymore as a fan because the executives who run it really don't give a crap anymore about those very points, the very stories that can actually be created as a result. But at the very least, I am happy this trailer is better in that aspect because of what they are showing us more than what we've seen in the teaser, but still does an excuse of what I am actually seeing not as fluid as the other Disney stories. The quality you would expect for a theatrical film, like the difference between a film and its directed DVD sequel. It's something that becomes more noticeable on each distinct rewatch of the trailer and how the movie comes across as more choppy and unblended with its background, losing a great sense of distinct identity towards it. It's something again I mentioned in the first video with Paper Man. Here you have this short story that has this sense of identity and blend of animation, done in this black and white 2.5D style without any much dialogue to it, really focusing on what they wanted to achieve in that world and it really worked. Every Everything feels fluid with each other and its ideas because they knew which style they actually wanted from the start compared to something that feels like a mismatch of various ideas that they actually wanted to push but didn't actually come to a distinct agreement. I could be wrong about this because sometimes they shape the story in so many different forms but with the executive decisions and the schedule of other stories that have been released, it just feels like that decision and nothing more than that. It feels like that Sophia the first style that has actually been shown on television rather than the theatrical film that people actually enjoy today as adults as they did as children. And at least that seems like that is the problem on the surface as many inside do tell that this might be a problem with the online compression, which I have noticed on my reviews looking back at YouTube's final published result compared to what I see editing, but it also doesn't seem like that is the fully the case with what is going on with the lighting and the colors that seem off still, compared to say the clips of like the Spider-Verse online right now which don't seem too much different from the trailers or when I saw it in theaters, still being the same quality we actually expected from it. Because theatrical releases are still the a prime way of experiencing these films where Wish actually should be seen that way, but it's the way it's already been presented that seems too lackluster in what should be expected. Lines that feel more like a filter rather than an actual design choice for the character. That no matter how beautiful you can actually sell us on the watercolor backgrounds or the details of the world, it still does not excuse the way the story would actually play out or the movement of its very animation. It feels restrained against its very world it tries to portray, a world that I am myself interested in and would love to see on screen, but once again against the animation of its characters that feels restrained against that. It just doesn't feel like it's complementing that part in any way compared to what 2D films could actually do that expresses more and logically blends in with the watercolor background. Something similar to what Lilo and Stitch had where the design of the characters did match the background of Kauai's mountains which were in fact really done in watercolor. That it makes you feel like you're in Hawaii in the scenes that feels real to this. And then you had films like Tarzan, Atlantis, and Treasure Planet combine the use of 3D with its 2D overall and it still fits in well with what they tried to express in the size of the world without taking taking away anything for where its design focus is. You agree with it because its choices fit compared to what has actually been shown in the 
trailers. And once again, if you compare the movies to say Encanto 2, you also notice how stiff this movie actually becomes in that regard in the realm of 3D. The characters are also very expressive on their own with the style that Encanto actually presents in the movement of his camera to portray the mood in the background, where the idea once again is the style of what the world is trying to be and actually expressed in the mood of the characters. Where now Disney finds itself wedged into the middle of it where it cannot be either of the two and results in its unclean movement. The closest we can compare this movie to is in fact Nimona, a film Disney almost canned themselves by shutting down Blue Sky Studios before it was actually revived, becoming a stylized film that was actually inspired by Ivan Earl, who actually contributed to the background art of many Disney films in the 1950s, especially with films like Sleeping Beauty, which is the most beautiful Disney film to date or most beautiful animated film ever. A world that actually blends in well with its character designs for the charming definition of what a medieval fairy tale actually entails. And in doing so with Nimona, they combine that with the modern world so well where the animation makes sense. Once again, it actually looks fluid and it flows well enough to sell you on the point that is actually being conveyed within the very movie. And that is something Wish actually hardly features at all. It feels choppy because they want to go back to 2D, but it also is trying to be fluid at time because the characters are in 3D. But I still think there are various elements within the characters itself that makes this film very unique on its own, but it sells me off as they're not doing enough for it to actually be believable as their films actually should. It doesn't feel like what I should expect at the top tier of the studio compared to the bottom that is usually going on TV. In a different time, people would probably be less harsh to this like they are now by general reactions, but when you are actually introduced to the standout movies that drop just before this where it creates a level of enjoyment not seen before in appreciating the art of animation, then why wouldn't anyone actually be critical to this before its release? Why shouldn't we be making the company actually do better for its fans and the overall audience that actually wants to enjoy something where the standards have been raised higher? Once again, this is the company that actually raised those standards in the first place. And I don't mean to actually constantly knock down those who actually work on this because there is a talent behind it and some actually might display passion for this new work, but that overall attitude gets overshadowed by this company making the most safest decisions ever. The original stories actually become too far and few in between in an age where the focus is more on the output of these remakes, sequels, and anything to deal with their brands they personally invested in. But then again, if their past work are anything to go by, then this might actually seem like a real hit once it is released and I don't doubt it, but just wish they actually cared about what is being built in the first place. Movies like this are in fact intended for all and do not need to be portrayed or perceived as a style that looks more like a kids program. How they actually need to invoke feelings that are believable yet overly animated and cartoonish that caters to a level of impossibility and believability for the adult. People will still enjoy this and warm up to this, but this is a style that sets more of a precedent that Disney is just too worried to move back into traditional 2D even at a time celebrating 100 years that would make sense for them to do so. That they find 3D creates more to be enjoyed rather than the effort it would take otherwise, making backgrounds to do the bare minimum to tribute to that in an effect. And the more we delay such 2D animation, the more we actually forget that and the art actually becomes lost forever. And even if we make steps to tribute to that, they still aren't doing enough to actually prove otherwise. Other films that have shown clear style in one direction that could have actually been 3D animated with an overall 2D flair. How you just need to feel the movement that is big in the sense of theatrical film, but it's not actually getting that at all. But then again, maybe I am sorely wrong about this and maybe they are right that I am missing something that goes for the storybook flair that this film has and the promise of what the characters could bring. It's just too early to tell at this point still, where it's a 50-50 of who knows situation with what we have learned. And I'd rather be proven wrong by many about what I think personally rather than what the surface have entailed with my own disappointment. But still, coming off the heels of a movie that wants to have traditional backgrounds without the traditional animated characters that usually come with it, it's just going to be disappointing overall until they change that. And that's the way it is going to be until the movie actually proves us otherwise. And with that said, I'm all done, so goodbye.